Shabbat Shalom. Welcome to Devash Lafi. Now, I said we talk about what does this mean when, when in the, the, the congregation, the letter to Smyrna, when John says that I, I remember the, as well the slander of those who say they are Jewish and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan, a synagogue of Satan. And he says, you know, uh, he says they're, they're, they're not, they say they are Jews, but they're not. They're a synagogue. Say, what is he talking about? What is he talking about? Well, there are several possibilities here. There are a few possibilities. Uh, three, really, I would say. So let's look at that, this portion, before we uh, leave this week, because we said we were going to address it. Let's address it for sure. And it's interesting, you know, the Smyrna, they really had to go, uh, they dealt with a lot of spiritual warfare, didn't they? They really had attacks from the enemy. They were really in a battle in warfare against the enemy. Why do we know that? Well, because he, he even mentions here the slander. Slander, Diabolus, is from Satan. The Satan is, is and the devil means slanderer. He's a he's one who slanders and gives fault is false. Well he's mentions the slanderer and he mentions the synagogue of Satan, the adversary. That's the, he he's adverse to us. He opposes to oppose in Hebrew and Greek, he's he's opposed, and then he mentions here the devil is about to throw some of you into prison. So they are really up to their necks in warfare, in opposition uh, against the enemy. But here he says, "I know your tribulation. I know it. I know what it means for you to have all the the, the pressure you're under, the stress you're under, the poverty you've undergone because of my name's sake." for me and 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 then the slander of those say they are Jewish but they're not they're a synagogue of Satan well uh, let me give you a couple uh, scholarly interpretations of it but there's nothing worse there's nothing worse I want to say there's nothing worse than than replacement theology it is horrible replacement theology is and supersessionism as it can be called in in theological circles than those that tell Jewish people they're no that when they come to Jesus they're no longer Jewish and that the church has replaced Israel the church has replaced Israel there's no longer a place the promises the oath the wonderful eternal promises the covenant promises God has made with the Jewish people are no longer valid that the church of Jesus Christ has replaced Israel proper there's nothing more horrific than that it's a horrible lie throughout the ages horrible it's horrible to tell Jewish people, a Jewish person that has come to faith and has found Jesus, you're no longer Jewish. That's a lie. Paul says, in, in, uh, and it could be one of the interpretations of this, what these people were. Paul says, I say, has God rejected his people? He hasn't, has he? Has he? He hasn't, has he? In Romans 11, 1, Paul says, may it never be. May it never be. For I too am an Israelite. Not I was, not I used to be. I am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. He knew his tribe in that, that time. They knew that they still knew the 12 tribes were still identifiable. God has not rejected his people whom he knew beforehand, who he knew beforehand. He has not rejected, he says. And he goes down and says there is a remnant according to, to grace right now that is following, that is faithful to him. So, uh, Paul says many times throughout the book of Acts, he says, I am a Hebrew, I am still Jewish. He didn't become a Christian and no longer Jewish. Of course, if you're a follower, then the in initial believers were identified as people of Haderech, the way, followers of Yeshua, the Messiah. They were, you know, we don't, it doesn't matter if we use the term Messianic or Hebrew Christian. In different times and centuries, they were, there were different titles. In the early Messianic community, the early believing community, they were called followers of Haderech, the way, Jewish and Gentile. Jews and Gentiles, followers of the way. But the, the Israel, the promises of God for the Jewish people were not replaced by the church. So Stern, David Stern, the late David Stern, who's with the Lord now, says, they tried to force Jewish practices on Gentile Christians. And this was a legalistic perversion of the Torah. He was telling Gentiles, he was Gentiles who pretended to be Jews. This is how he inter interprets it. Dr. Late, uh, doc, not the late, the present, Dr. Arnold Fruchtenbaum says it may refer to the Romans who considered themselves to be the people of God with the emperor being a God himself. And he says, therefore, the believers were being persecuted by those claiming to be the people of God, but they were not. They were not. So this is replacement theology or supersessionism. 
Dr. Amy Jo Levine, a great a friend of mine, wonderful, who wrote the, the, the Jewish New Testament, uh, who penned that, uh, says Yochanan is declaring, John is declaring that the Gentile God-fearers claiming uh, an affiliation with, they were claiming with Judaism, uh, an affiliation with Judaism as a basis for salvation, they're not Jews at all, and not, are not Jews at all. So John is declaring that they're not Jews at all, but they're claiming these Gentile God-fearers, that's what they were at the time, Gentile who had, were, had become, who were part of the Jewish people, had aligned themselves with the Jewish people, they were called God-fearers, they, but they were not Jewish. And so, they, so this, these are some of the interpretations. Now, could this also refer to uh, a Jewish religious segment that were hostile to the Jewish believers? I believe it's possible. And and persecuted them, and may, perhaps Yochanan is speaking to them as Jews to Jews, you know, Jews to Jews, as Paul did in Romans two twenty eight and twenty nine, when he says, you know, he's not a Jew inward, outwardly, who is one outwardly, but he's a Jew inwardly. Circumcision is that of the heart and of the spirit, um, and that's the true Jew. And so Paul is, in a sense, saying there, you're letting the adversary use you rather than the Lord, rather than Hashem, and you're not being a true Jew. A true Jew would embrace the Jewish Messiah, Yeshua. So like this is like Yeshua saying to his audience, you're not really descendants of Abraham. If you're truly descendants of Abraham, in John chapter 10, uh, John chapter 8, when he wrote, verses 31 through uh, 47, uh, you'd be following in his steps of faith obedience. It's a Jew speaking to Jews. I remember the story Jan Moskowitz, uh, who's with the Lord now, said years ago, and he, he described a man speaking to his family and yelling at his family to get into a family picture in New York. And he said, get in the picture to someone, one of his sons who kept getting out of the picture. He said, get back in the picture so I can take this, we can take this family photo. And then a, uh, a bystander walks by and sees this, this, the, the child getting out of the picture. And he yells and says, get back in the picture. And they all turn to him and say, who are you saying get in the picture to? They could speak to their their own family member in a way that the bystander could not did not have a right to do. So there was in the family, it's okay to be harder than you can outside of the family. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying, but this is uh, there's a there's a, a way of speaking that you can to your own family and a Jew to the Jew or any nationality and anyone to within their own family can do so. But I want to repeat: replace, replacement theology is a scourge. It's a scourge on the church. There's no replacement. God's covenants in Jeremiah that he promised, his promises, I'll, as a, if the, let the stars fall out of the heaven, if the stars are still in the heaven, so only if they could be thrown out of the heavens and if the sun would no longer shine and the moon, will my, will my promises no longer be valid for my people Israel. God keeps his promises. God will keep his promise. Yes, he'll bring repentance to our people. Yes. And may I say it's happening now since October 7, our Jewish people, many are coming to a faith, back to their faith in the Lord, coming to a realizing that their Jewish, their, their identity is important and to be a part of God's people. Now, may, they, may we all come to the knowledge of his son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, our Messiah, because he is our promised Jewish Messiah. And if we're going to be the best Jews, true Jews, in the truest sense of the word, we should believe the one he has sent, Yeshua HaMashiach. But the church never, Gentiles never, Gentile Christians never replace what God, it's a, the church is wonderful. What God has done through the body of Messiah is amazing. We who believe are part of that body, Jew and Gentile, one body in Ephesians chapter two, one body, one people, but we never, it never replaces, that body never replaces the people of Israel and the promises that God is going to do, the valley of dry bones, which is going to live again and God is going to breathe life into them and they'll stand up an army and live again. So it's going to, everything's going to happen like God said. You have a great Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom.